For many people, the idea that environmental protection is a moral issue is not a new one. Many people are motivated to protect the environment because of their moral and religious beliefs. But more recently, the issue of climate change has brought us to a whole new level. And importantly, major theologians are starting to think about climate change as a moral issue. There isn't any major religious tradition that doesn't say we have a responsibility for the world of which we are a part to care and tend, and that's language of Genesis. And climate change is going to impact creation in ways that hasn't been true for a long time. We wanted to do, in, in essence, a compare and contrast uh, of different religious traditions, different faith traditions, to see how do they approach this. Uh, are there scriptural mandates that they see for addressing climate change? How do they view the standing of people versus the environment? These are critical differences. Muslims take the Quran as the constitution and also the tradition and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. And from both those primary sources of uh, our faith and our, our Islamic law, uh, there's so much support uh, for the environment and care for the earth. Muslims often speak about the rights that we owe to God, the Creator, and the rights that we owe to the Hulk, the creation. And the Hulk always includes um, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, even the stones that the Quran would say fall out of, out of fear for God. We have very strong traditions about an ethic of, of respect, an ethic of awe, that is, we live in a universe that has God at the center. Um, and even for uh, Jews who don't sort of believe in that traditional framework, I think they still feel a sense of awe, perhaps also at the sense of creation. So I think we have these streams running through a tradition that tell us how important it is to, to be aware of the way our behavior is affecting other individuals, and the way our behavior is affecting the planet. Creation herself is is reflective of the voice of God. The world is charged with the grandeur of God, as Gerard Manley Hopkins says. Uh, Francis of Assisi says, you know, I praise to you, brother sun and sister moon. And it's revelatory, as Augustine says, as just as much as scriptures. The overall cosmology is one of repeated rebirth. Every being, including animals, have been reborn again and again and again. And that as a result of this perception, there is a, a deep ethics that we owe ourselves for the protection of our own behavior, but that we also are, are indebted to these other forms of being, these other animals that have been part of our continuum of experience. So that in many of these faiths, vegetarianism is very important, as well as vows that seek to do no harm. And the idea is that because there are so many different life forms that if we are doing harm to any one life form, it, is, it will have a negative effect upon ourselves. So as we look at an issue such as climate change, if we think of not only the harm to humans, but we think of the harm to all of the species that are being destroyed, as well as to the ecosystems and, and the, um, even the shorelines themselves. This is something that the ethics of, of these traditions see, say, no, we really have to pay attention. This merging of religion and climate change is a powerful force for driving change within society. Uh, it's very influential in national politics. Uh, it's influential in people's voting patterns. And so when we looked out there, we saw that this was an important component of the debate over climate change and wanted to contribute to it with a conference like this. Climate change is the biggest thing ha that's happened to the planet in thousands of years. So that's a reason to be concerned. We've set in motion changes that will now go on probably for hundreds of, of years. You've got a changing planet in which human beings for the first time are an agent of that change. The problem is so immediate and the crisis is so vast that if we're not part of the solution, we are going to be part of the problem. That is, we, we are called upon, like I think many other groups in the society, to really find ways that we have to work together. Faith communities can act in a number of different dimensions uh, and um, facets of their, of, their, of their life. On an individual level, personal level, uh, one can simplify one's lifestyle and um, and then invest perhaps in renewable energy to 
the, the carbon emissions one does put out. And in our case, we took the next step where we uh, put renewable systems on, on the rectory. And as I said, Sacramento. So we have a wind turbine, we have solar panels, we have a solar collector for hot water, we have a solar attic fan. The purpose of this conference was both to engage an in depth discussion and inform, but I think it was also an opportunity for people to perhaps examine their own beliefs. That we are a part of, not apart from creation. Yeah.